Hello, I am Marie Contreras. For the last 20 years, I have been a vintage and antique collectibles reseller on eBay. For the last five years, I have run my own pet care business. I write a weekly blog about pet care, and I recently wrote my first book about caring for dogs. I make videos on this channel about growing a small business, saving money, and living life on your own terms. If this sounds like something you would enjoy, stick around. I hope you enjoy what I created for you. In today's video, I'm going to explain why I quit pet sitting and dog walking on Rover and Wag. Here is what you need to know. Why did I quit pet sitting and dog walking on Rover and Wag after I was on the Rover app for five years and Wag for a year? Simple. My own pet care business was busy enough. It no longer made financial or strategic sense to take the extra business that I could get from having an active profile on Rover and Wag anymore. The high cost, lack of process control and reputation were the main factors that I considered when making this decision. Rover and Wag both take a healthy chunk of the commission earned by the dog walkers and pet sitters on their apps. They do a great job of marketing and the apps are popular, so I understand that this is worth a lot, but Wag takes 40%. That is a lot. That is before you pay your income taxes on the money earned or fill your gas tank. Rover takes 25%. Those fees really add up. Fees, such high fees. I could justify paying those fees when I struggle to find customers at the beginning of my pet care business. Better to be busy and earning money than sitting at home wondering how I would pay my bills. Getting the word out for a new business takes time. By signing up for Rover and Wag in the beginning, it kept me busy. It got me in front of clients. By providing good service, customers told their friends. It didn't take long for that to snowball into a thriving business. Starting on Wag or Rover makes sense if you don't have your first client yet, or you're not sure how serious you are about a pet care business. If you need some extra cash on the side, these apps may be perfect for you. Keep in mind that you are not an employee with these apps. However small, you are still running a small business. Rover and Wag offer some insurance to the clients. They will also suspend your account if a pet is ever injured until they investigate the issue fully. If the dog runs out on your watch, you will be removed, and rightfully so. But you are still responsible if a pet or home gets damaged and the client wants to pursue legal action. The insurance that these apps offer does not provide any coverage if you get hurt while working. There is no workman's comp insurance provided. If you want that, it's costly to purchase for yourself in many areas. I researched it when I first started working in this field and the cost quoted was over $4,000 per year for workman's comp and excluded the owner of the business, which was me. Health insurance is also paid out of pocket. Your car expenses can add up too. And you do need a reliable car in most areas. I started on the apps with boarding and then later pet sitting and really found my groove when I switched to dog walking. With clients that wanted me to stay overnight and not leave 24-hour care, I charged $200 a day. With clients that didn't need me to stay at their home 24-7, I charged per visit from $20 to $30, depending on what was needed and how many pets they had. When I signed up for WAG, I was shocked to see that they determined the pricing for walks and pet sitting. Dog walking charges were reasonable, but pet sitting was $30 per day. There were no clear rules for how long you stayed at the home. It was confusing for the clients, which made them angry. I called WAG to ask what, was, what the expectations were, and they said to let the dog out for potty breaks and make sure you feed them. And that was it, you didn't have to stay. The clients thought someone was staying at their home all day, walking their dogs multiple times during the day, picking up their mail, taking out the trash, and leaving their home spotless for $30. It seems like a fantastic deal if you're the client, but to work all day for $30 in the United States will leave you destitute and bitter very quickly. On the other hand, with Rover, you determine your prices. This made more sense and is why I lasted a lot longer on the Rover app. I barely made it a year on the WAG app. Both apps will hire anyone with a clean background check that can pass a simple common sense test. They have a few videos to watch and call that pet care training. Reputation. Many of the walkers on both of these apps are less experienced and very inexpensive. That's your competition. Because of this, they've earned both apps a horrible reputation. Both apps are now known for losing and harming dogs, resulting in the death of family pets. The video circulated on social media showing home fo camera footage of wild parties being thrown in customers' homes are usually Rover and Wag sitters. A few rotten sitters and walkers have made customers very wary of anyone that works on those apps. This is not to say that every person on the app is clueless because they're obviously not, but it doesn't take more than a handful of bad people to just ruin the reputation of a business. There are many good people on the app. 
but the reputation and the horror stories are something that you will need to overcome with new potential clients. This can be a problem with the industry in general. All it takes is for someone to have a bad experience with another walker or sitter, and then you're up against that, that chip on their shoulder when, when you meet them. But as a smart business owner, the reputation of my business is vital to my success. I didn't want to be associated with groups that were becoming known for carelessness. It was more important for me to protect the image of my own business than to continue picking up a few extra walks here and there with the Rover and the WAG app. And then policies. When you use the Rover and WAG app, you're subject to their policies. They can also change their policies at any time. And I wanted more control over how I ran my business. The biggest of those policies is related to customer contact information. When you acquire customers through Rover or WAG, they're not your customers. They belong to Rover or WAG. You do not have permission to contact them privately. They don't give you the customer's real phone numbers or email addresses. You only have access to their address when you have a request and then all the information disappears after the service is over. If you are suspected of communicating with the customer off the app, they can delete your account without notice. Email lists are valuable. Many business owners believe the email list to be the most valuable marketing asset you could have. And if you're on the Rover or WAG app, you don't have any of that information. I want to be able to communicate with my customers and to promote my business directly to them. And they want that too. I was constantly reminding my customers to not communicate with me off app. Of course, you have to be respectful of privacy and follow local email laws. It's not going to do you any good if you upset your customers by spamming them or sending them constant emails. They'll go elsewhere. So you have to be smart about it. But you also have to have that information. You have to have the list of how to contact your customers when you have something new that comes out or you have a, you want to run a sale. You want to be able to communicate that directly to your customers. And then there's the competition. On the dog walking apps, your competition is listed right above and below your profile. When I have customers referred to me personally, they may be considering other pet care providers and they probably are, but they won't be looking at us all on the same page and they won't have all of our prices lined right up next to each other. And then there's insurance. As a business owner, insurance is important. With Rover and WAG, the insurance they offer is designed to protect Rover and WAG, not the walker or the sitter or really even the customer. They don't provide any coverage to the sitter or walker. If you get hurt on a walk, you're on your own. When selecting insurance, I can select the policy that protects me, my business, and my customers by ensuring coverage for accidents that can happen to the dog or the home. I can select the amount of coverage too. I have higher limits of coverage on my own policies than I did through the Rover and WAG apps. I never intended to be on these apps as long as I was. I would use them again if I was starting though. I tried to market my business when I first started. I printed business cards, flyers, door hangers, and I hit the pavement trying to get the word out about my new business. I walked all over town putting door hangers on doorknobs and flyers on cars. I posted on social media. I never got a single client that way though. I got my clients one at a time from friends of clients I found on Rover wet or in wag neighbors who saw that i was walking dogs i had a a magnetic sign that i put on my car and i posted a flyer in the laundry room where i live with my face on it and my dog and so my neighbors knew what i did letting people know what you do is the best advertisement because people want to people want to buy from people they know first they would rather not have a stranger come in their house and take care of their dog they would rather have somebody that a friend had already used or a family member had already used or somebody that they've seen walking dogs and and the dogs are happy. People don't want to just have a stranger come in their home. They're very, it's, it's unnatural to think that that is something that's great. It was a grind and it didn't happen overnight. There were other benefits to using the apps though. So I don't wanna say that everything about the app is bad. When I was caring for my mom, I was grateful that I could accept or decline service requests on the app because if I declined an, if I declined a service, the app would send the customer to the next available walker and the customers weren't impacted by my being busy. This was much less stressful than in my own business. I have to nurture those relationships more than I do on WAG or Rover because I'm solo and there isn't someone else to pick up the slack if I decline a request. By working with WAG and Rover, I could take time to get my website up and running too. But in five years of having my own website, it only attracted two customers total, only one of those scheduled services. I use the website more to direct referrals to sign up. It has not been the lead generator that I planned it to be. It has been more successful as a way to communicate with my clients through the blogs that I post on the site. My final takeaway on WAG and Rover is that I'm grateful that they exist. 
They got me started in this business. They helped me. They were kind of like a set of training wheels in the beginning. I'm ready to take the training wheels off and I'm ready to, to ride solo. But I am grateful that I had them in the beginning, beginning because they did make starting my business much easier. And I would, I would use them again. If you enjoyed this video, nudge the like button. If you would like to see more like this, consider subscribing. If you would like to read the blog or check out my new book, I'm going to leave links to them in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye till next time.